comments, sir? Come, come. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Taskeen. Good afternoon, sir. So, you are from Meerut? Yes, sir. And you are like living in Dehradun? Uh, sir, I was born and brought up in Dehradun. And after my father's retirement in 2018, we have shifted to Meerut. You have shifted to? Yes, sir. Okay. So, please introduce yourself. Uh, sir, my name is Taskeen Khan. Uh, I was born and brought up in Dehradun. I have uh, done my schooling from Kendra Vidyalaya Ordnance Factory, Dehradun. And I have completed my graduation from DBS PG College, Dehradun. During my school and college days, I have held some leadership positions like being the vice president of my college, being the house captain of my school. Also, I was a part of NSS and the Bharat Scouts and Guides. Uh, as a person, I am a compassionate person and in my free time, I like to talk to my family. Okay. So, uh, you have held a lot of leadership positions. Yes, sir. So, what do you think? Like it's more about team spirit, team building, or it's more about individual strength, like you have to work and show your individual capabilities, or it is more like you have to get some work done from a team. What do you have realized as a leader? But as a leader, you have to be mentally stable. So yes, individually you have to be strong because you have to be accommodative to a lot of diverse views which will be coming from team. And at the same time, you have to ensure that other people are in line with you. You are taking the people uh, who are not at equal footing with you uh, along with you. So basically, it's more about uh, team spirit. And if a leader is able to develop that trust between the members of the team, then it is considered that he is a good uh, leader. Can you just, whatever you have just told to me, can you explain it with some specific example related to your role of some re leadership role? For example, you were vice president yes. in college. So can you explain some example where you have to cater the different different needs and demands of a team and at the same time you have to do your work or you have to perform can you explain some situation sir it was during the union week time when we were having a lot of competitions which were going on around and also there were some people who uh, just wanted to uh, get along with the speeches and other things that we will just invite the guests and they will be doing their speeches and because they will be having a, a very less time so, uh, but uh, the other members of the school, they wanted to perform also, but the judges and uh, the people who were invited there, they did not have that much of time. So at that time, I kind of uh, try to uh, talk to people and also I try to talk to uh, the performers if they can cut short the limit of their dance. So in this way, the both things were accommodated. Very good. So how do you think that this will help you as an administrator like? or it will be like of no help as an administrator sir as an administrator you have to deal with the diverse views so yes you have to be that much accommodative and acceptable at the same time that you can listen to people so that listening thing it has a very important role in administration so in okay. this way it will help you have played basketball also yes sir you played in which position like there are some positions in basketball? Yes, sir. sir I was center. Center. Yes. Sir. And what are the other positions? Uh, sir, uh, point guard, shooting guard, and uh, center is there. And there are two zeros. Zeros are forwards? Yes, sir, forwards. So, what are the role of these two forwards? Sir, uh, basically, they are generally of uh, good height so that they can take the rebounds. And at the same time, their passing skills have to be so accurate. Because whenever the ball is under the three uh, three degree uh, line, so uh, the issue of getting into the ball, it becomes very tough and all the teams are struggling for that. So these people, they have to be very quick in, in taking the rebound. Can you explain me like three reasons why basketball is not that much famous in our country or uh, like there's a league in US. Your other European countries. 
three reasons like so firstly uh, the infrastructure issue is here in india uh, then uh, we don't have the infrastructure for basketball like we are having in uh, in other countries so but still is... uh, we are having uh, our indian uh, international men's and women's team and they are performing quite well on it at least in uh, in the game which are limited to asia uh, secondly the very culture it is not very well uh, developed uh, towards basketball uh, it is not very uh, i would say that uh, if we talk about cricket uh, at a uh, field level at ground level gully danda is there so somewhere there is a kind of familiarity with that game so that familiarity is not been able to develop regarding basketball in india and don't you think it's some somewhat related to height of also the uh, height sir? which is like the average height don't yes, you think uh, the height is definitely an advantage in basketball game uh and uh, this can be a criteria that uh, we don't have that much uh, uh heighted people in india but uh, i have seen people who are of shorter height and they have performed well for example uh while point guards and shooting guards uh, there is not much height which is needed what you need is your muscle strength and other things so height is uh, not exactly the limiting factor but if we will provide the exact opportunities and the infrastructure then uh, we can obviously ex uh, excel in basketball too you know some indian origin player has played in basketball league recently yes, sir. us uh, so what i remember is that there are two uh, indian origin people who are in nba who have selected for nba one was uh, uh, satnam singh bhamra and the other was ami jyot singh mm. okay and <clears throat> what what do you what you are like what are your views on a recent there was a news like american women basketball player was held in russia okay for like months in a prison you know about this oh uh, no sir i'm not aware of she was just like last month she was released from the <laughs> prison you know uh sir i'm not aware about this controversy okay. thank you Uh, you have studied from Kendra Vidyalay. Yes. Can sir. you please tell the slogan and symbol of Kendra Vidyalay? Uh, if you remember. So the slogan is Tatvam Pushan Apa Branu, and uh, the symbol is there was a sun, and there are rays which are coming from there. Rising sun. Yes, sir. Rising sun. Uh, you have written that watching thriller movies, mystery movies is one of your interest. So, uh, can you tell me that according to you, are movies the vehicle of change in the society? If yes, and if no, what are the reasons? Sir, if we talk about the social issues which movies are taking up right now, for example, we have seen uh, movies like Thappar and Chapak, which are somewhere developing a social sensitivity in the society, and also uh, some issues like dowry, they have been brought up by Raksha Bandhan. uh however we cannot say that they are directly the reflection of society they can take up some issues because we see that uh, the purpose behind making a movie is to get a uh, to get into the commercial business so uh, they will uh, show certain things which may not be uh, the exact reality which we see so in society so my question is can they be vehicle of change social change according to you can they make any change in the society on a larger scale they, they can initiate the change sir they can be a a, cha a a vehicle of social change in the direction when we talk about uh, developing a social sensitivity among the people uh, for example we have recently seen that certain movies have came up which have kind of generated a uh, i would say an integration uh, in the society so yes in this direction they can be a change your favorite movies in the genre which you have written uh sir i watched shutter island and i liked it so hindi movies you don't watch uh, sir i watch some so any hindi movies in the this genre uh sir drishyam too was good if i ask you to name two three movies because it is one of your hobbies so yes, sir. you have watched many i think uh sir i have watched in hollywood hmm. uh not that much in hindi okay hollywood but, name uh, you Uh, sir, I have watched uh, uh, firstly the Shutter Island. Secondly, I watched the Prisoners, Identity, and uh, uh, also a uh, Gone Girl. Uh, okay. Then. How about Night Trout? Yes, sir. So, can you name the director of Gone Girl? 
सर डेविड फिंचर हैव यू सीन एनी ऑफ अदर मूवीज ऑफ द सेम डायरेक्टर यस सर सर द गेम वाज ऑफ द डेविड फिंचर यू हैव लिव लिव्ड इन टू डिफरेंट स्टेट्स उत्तराखंड एंड उत्तर प्रदेश हैव यू सीन एनी डिफरेंस इन सोशो कल्चर एंड एनवायरमेंट ऑफ बोथ द स्टेट्स सर द वेरी फर्स्ट डिफरेंस इज दैट दैट उत्तराखंड कल्चर इज मोर इनक्लाइंड towards the himachal pradesh culture which is uh, uh, which is sort of uh, homogeneous uh, in its origin and uh, the culture which we are having in up it is more inclined towards the uh, i would say the culture which develop, uh, which is there in central india and in bihar so uh, in up we see that yes caste norms are very stringent and uh, uh, the deviance is not very much promoted uh while in uttarakhand it is more of uh, uh coherence uh in a sense and also uh, in uh, cultural aspects the dressing and all it is very much different uh, like the way kumaunis and garhwalis they dress up and uh, the way uh, in uh, in uttar pradesh people dress up uh, food habits are also uh, very different uh, the, uh, the people who are in uh, uttarakhand they are more into the food which is uh, which is i would say that uh, grain oriented and uh, like they having a pahadi food of culture which is uh, more commonly said and in up it is more uh, uh, the mughli uh, mughlai i would say if food culture is there in up um, there are many uh, many voices for the simultaneous election in all the country one election at a time so what are your your views on this subject is it good or is it bad it had merits uh sir uh, talking about the system which we are having in india simultaneous elections would be a bit difficult task to do because uh, we have we have we earlier had this system uh but it did not work because uh, the legislative assemblies and uh, the lok sabha they might get disrupted in between the sessions so how to go about the next uh, next elections how to take them uh, how how to take the state assemblies and the national uh, the lok sabha together so th- this will be the issue however it can be a uh, a, a right uh, thing to take up when we talk about the administrative cost which which is involved in this but again there are issues for example the security forces uh and the teachers which are employed during the during this election thing uh so there can be a kind of objective uh, shifting uh, in the in the profession so in this direction it may not be that good uh you have mentioned the deployment of teachers yes whenever there is any require um, requirement of to deploy mass in people in mass numbers most of the time uh, the burden is uh, borne by the teachers uh it also affect the study of uh, studies of uh, students yeah. so what do you have to say about this should they be employed deployed in such activities or not uh sir during holidays they can be deployed and plus this will be the choice of teachers whether they wanted to go whether they want to go with uh, with it or not and the second thing is that that uh, their choice sh- should come with certain restrictions that during their free time they can do this but when it's like the school hours uh then it shall not be uh, promoted no choice is given to teachers if they have, we have to deploy they will be deployed okay what's the name of what's the meaning of your name uh sir it means peace and satisfaction it's okay i believe women are themselves responsible for the problems social problems especially for example if a woman uh, herself is getting married she doesn't want to give dowry but when her son is getting married she expects dowry she herself is not willing to give birth to a baby girl so i believe somewhere women are themselves responsible for the problems they are facing what do you think uh sir a society consists of various people and uh, there are various conflicts which exist on various fronts so uh, whatever is happening now and whatever is the situation of women regarding security and other things it's not the right thing to say that uh, they are responsible for their own issues we have had this long history of patriarchy and other form of exploitation which we have seen so various social factors and social barriers 
and i would say that all the stakeholders in society in some or the other way is responsible for their security issues or the kind of barriers which exist for them so do you think women can only be liberated when men come to their help it is very difficult for a woman independently to come out and to become liberated what are your thoughts sir i would say that when it becomes to making women free then uh, there can be a male sensitivity which we can have and uh, if women are ready to accept the exposure of their husbands then and we are having this right amount of male sensitivity in them then male can help them in getting liberated but see let me tell you women want to come out of their house want to live freely want to work but then they keep a domestic help so that they can do their household work and she is also a woman so that means one woman will only be liberated at the cost of the other woman what do you have to say on this uh, sir it is said that if we are together we can do certain things and in society also various uh, social institutions and various social members they work in coherence so that there can oh, be a balance which can be established how can you see a woman can come out of the house only when someone takes care of her household responsibilities yes sir but that is again borne by a woman sir it is not necessary sir uh, most husband, of the cases her husband can be a help and uh, right now we are seeing that uh, with with the rising level of education we are seeing that men are also becoming very much responsible towards their wives and uh, they are okay what what do you understand by reproductive rights sir uh, when it comes to bodily autonomy then it's a right of women that she has to uh, no i'm talking in general terms i'm not specifically talking about women what do you understand by reproductive rights the reproductive rights are the rights regarding uh, the reproduction the birth uh, and the abortion of the child is it is it freely available in india uh, sir under the amendment which we had in mpp act in 2021 uh, to some extent it is available what is the extent the 24 weeks no you are not getting we have a law in some states yes sir where you cannot contest the election of sarpanch if you have more than two children yes sir so don't you think it is against the reproductive rights of a citizen of our country uh that is where i wanted you to i wanted you to take you there but since it's fine what do you think sir when it comes to the state policy then state has to look around but that is not for mlas and mps it is only for sarpanch sir it is considered that uh, the level of education Uh, in the rural sector is not that much so maybe seeing that thing the at the local uh, self government level the government has introduced that but again uh, it has to be seen with the stakeholder approach and on the need basis for example if it has been introduced at local self government level and if there is a need that it has to be introduced at mla level also or maybe at at, uh, at any level then we can go for this policy but again we have to look around a lot of other issues uh, because in india we have demographic dividend so uh, our population is not exactly a burden for us so uh, maybe we can more focus on skill building okay it's, it's fine uh, what role do you think what role do, can you imagine for a woman in gig economy sir as the education level of women are increasing and also they are employed in other jobs in their free time they can go for uh, gig jobs also and uh, it's a good arena for them what But problems again, do you think they will face once this gig economy concept gains currency uh, sir security issues are always there for women not just in gig economy but uh, any security of what kind uh sir it is regarding uh, the perception which we are having for women in our society uh, unfortunately uh, so okay it's that, okay it's okay uh, you you have written that you customize old clothes yes sir do you know a concept called technical textiles uh, yes sir what, what is it so these are the textiles which are used uh, in uh, technical aspects like uh, uh in medical uh, field Very we have uh, pp kits and uh, the mask which we are having okay my last question uh, will technology make life 
better for women or worse sir it can go in both ways first of all uh, how it is making better for women because so many uh, social media entrepreneurs we are having right now they are getting equal opportunity to showcase their talent they are getting skills we are having a google's program of b2 digital sir please go sir after 12th you had a good marks then why you gone for bsc and not engineering or such courses uh sir uh, i thought of pursuing civil services as my career so i thought that it will be more comfortable so looking back do you think it was a correct decision uh, sir i did not have that much awareness at that time so uh, i would say that it was a correct decision in in the way that science has given me a lot of things the kind of objectivity and rationality which we need and the critical thinking which we need so in that direction it was a right decision or you think that you should have gone to ba uh sir science was something in which i was interested at that time so okay. i thought of continuing with that okay okay <clears throat> sociologically if i should go for a gender equality or gender neutrality what do you think the gender equality is about treat all the gender equally and giving them equal opportunities either it's social or economical when it, when we talk about gender neutrality we have to uh, in in certain things for example uh, while giving wages we have to be gender neutral we don't uh, we have to give it according to the work they are doing not based on their gender so this is something which we can take as an example of gender neutrality but as a society what we should target so we have to uh, we have to target both first of all we should try to be a gender liberal society and then we can go for uh, gender neutrality in the long run okay we are not liberal presently so we are liberal but again it is said that india is somewhere in the conflict uh, when it comes to its values we are imbibing modern values but still in some course we are traditional so okay. we are still still trying to develop that consensus in our society so you had your interest in debate also correct uh yes debating sir. so we can have one debate on the issue that india quarreling is better or india tranquil that is peaceful is better you got a subject uh sir uh, i need a bit more uh, uh, explanation of the india quarreling sir i don't know the quarreling name. means uh, fighting or like uh, talking okay, okay. is better or india peaceful tranquil is better uh, uh sir i would say that peace is something which gives no, which side you want to take sir i would take that india peaceful is better okay okay mm-hmm. so i would say that uh, uh, 75 years of democracy have already passed and we have seen that how successfully our constitution has taken us all along the diverse ideologies which uh, we have in india we are on the right way but again uh, there are certain issues which in such a diverse society uh, are going to come so uh, we have been able to tackle them till now and hopefully in future also we will take them along but peacefully na no, you are talking about so what yes, about sir. peace factor in this so peace is something uh, which we always try to achieve uh, peace is related to the stability in society and uh, india is somewhere having this uh, capacity this accommodation capacity in it that with such diverse ideologies also it is uh, having a constitutional laws it is having all the organs which are working in coherence to establish that peace that peace will come only when we'll stop fighting so in that case we'll have one nation one religion one culture one language don't you think uh sir i pardon uh, but i don't agree with this mm-hmm. the strength of india is its diversity and uh, in 75 years of independence we have carried it very confidently and uh, we are one of the emerging economy right now we are one of the largest democracy in the world so we can take it along yeah, we can but then we will have to keep quarreling with among the ourselves multiple thousand parties are represented is it good or bad sir it represent uh, the diverse ideologies which exist in india and in a democracy there will be diversity and uh, it is the ability of our system that it listens to all and it does things according to uh, the various needs of the people so it is kind of doing the right balancing act okay okay somebody talking about the uh, bharat jodo do you think that india is on part of uh, like separating seceding 
sir uh, there are certain conflicts which will bind to occur in any society and uh, seeing the other countries which are facing different kind of conflicts even though there is not much diversity which exist if we talk about india then india is uh, very well uh, already combined and integrated in its form uh, but uh, we can always uh, uh, come forward with such initiatives which will somewhere give uh, give us a kind of sense or sensitivity towards the common culture which we share with each other okay okay about the relationship with our neighbor myanmar india is in dilemma whom to support the democratic forces who are fighting for reestablishment democracy or military junta which is ruling there what is your opinion on it sir we have to be a bit cautious while dealing with myanmar because we have internal security issues with them so india is doing a quite a balancing act and it is continuing with its quiet diplomacy so i think we should continue with that while balancing both what is that supporting whom sir it's there is no necessity uh, or necessity to support anything we can uh, have certain uh, combined issue uh, combined uh, infrastructural projects with them like kaladan project and uh, the myanmar india and thailand uh, uh, highway which we are having so it is very much necessary seeing the security thing and other economic aspects thousands of people have migrated to india in northeast yes, and sir. myanmar government is calling them back yes. shall we send them back sir i think we should uh, talk to people regarding this whether they want to go back which people there are those people migrated yes sir they'll say no uh, sir we should we shall try to talk to the government and we shall try to see that what can be the various aspects how we can uh, relocate them or maybe we can uh, uh, bring them uh, if we want to keep them here uh, with certain conditions we can keep them here but uh, if uh, we have to send them back then we should also try to ensure that uh, they do not get any hurdle any humanitarian they do not get into any humanitarian crisis again they may go no because myanmar is completely under military rule and very cruel rule it is like killing thousands of people yes sir don't it is risky to send them back sir uh, we cannot be sure about this thing we need to have more discussions regarding this and buddha government has to come forward and uh, take this decision But first of all that is illegal government junta itself is illegal government don't you think what to talk with such government which is illegal sir india's diplomacy has this capacity that it always keeps its national interest on priority so uh, its politics or we can say its diplomacy doesn't change with the day to day politics either if it's of myanmar it's or it's selfish politics myanmar. or you can say it's like a very a name of real politics there is no ideology there is no ideology required like anybody is there just talk with them any like achieve your own self interest is there what's capacity in that what's the capacity for it sir for india it is very necessary mm -hmm. to maintain its uh, security uh, issues in line uh, with the infrastructural issues like we talk about and in this way we keep our national interest on priority so talking and discussion has no harm uh, we so can do talk could we talk with pakistan sir we can go ahead with that we stop the talk with pakistan you know we are minus one policy in which we stop the talks with pakistan simply yes sir but minus one policy cannot be a way forward for india pakistan relationship india has this uh, inclusive image in its foreign policy uh, we had gujral doctrine we had this uh, thing that we always uh, act on priority basis when it comes to our neighbors so india has always this bigger hand when we deal with our neighbors or any other country which is not even at equal footing with us so india can always take this forward okay mirat what happened on uh, exactly that uh, it mounted of soldiers to start a revolt in 1857 Uh, sir it was considered that the cartridges which was uh, used to cover the guns it was having it was it's just a controversy and it is not proved that it was having some uh, fat which was going against both the hindu and the muslim religious practices so the sepoys they said that they don't want to continue with that and they so why birat undi it happened everywhere issue was common everywhere na no? yes sir why birat undi uh, it happened But the revolt began from Meerut only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, Meerut Kant area is there, mm -hmm. so maybe there is some relation with that. But I'm not sure what exactly was there. Okay. And what slogan they gave at Meerut? Sorry, sir. What slogan they gave? Sir, Delhi, chalo. Okay. And uh, 
uh, what happened if the revolt would have got successful? What do you think? Was India's history would have been different in that case? Sir, up to some extent, it was successful because. No, no, suppose it would have been fully successful. Then what would have been India's history? So there can be a possibility that we might have achieved our freedom struggle a bit earlier. What like freedom struggle? Why freedom struggle required? Na? We are free only then. Are you getting 1857 is successful? Then we are free only. Na? Sir, the revolt was not pan-India. It was only in certain areas. Again, you are going to the revolt happen. Yes, sir. I am asking that if you would have been successful, what kind of India today would have been? Sir, I'm not able to think on this article. Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you, sir.